sucks fucking sick. Bro. God, it's so cool. Shit's crazy. Yo, it's... we got, like, at least eight views in the last episode. Like, at least. I told you. I told you I was going to be Joe Rogan, but for Homestuck. And I was right. It's happening. Mm -hmm. We're forming a... A very dedicated fan base. Yeah, a dedicated fan base of like 10 people on Twitter, <laughs> which is pretty fucking sick. Grubcast! It's time for the Grubcast. Hello, everybody. It's me. Hey. John Egbert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John Egbert, host of the Grubcast. With me is John Egbert. Say hi. <laughs> hi, I'm John Egbert. Uh, Whoa. Home of the Egbert. That's cool. Where's Dadbert? I don't know. No, I I'm Molten. I'm your host. That's my other host. Say hi. Uh, hi, I am your other host, E.T. Man, pretty epic and cool. E.T., we got a little bit of housekeeping to do. We got a little bit of housekeeping. I know all that right, you right. want to live in just a slimy sludge pool with your grub self. In, However... In pure squalor, yes. Yeah, just like a, a peasant in the French Revolution. The best way to be. Wasn't there a guy in the French Revolution who was like super rich but he died like in his bathtub? That sounds like a lady like familiar. came in and like stabbed him because he was like killing too many people. <laughs> I don't remember that, but that sounds vaguely familiar. Homestuck. Yeah. Uh, we got some housekeeping to do, similar to me murdering that bug. It's <laughs> dead, and in a similar way, we're going to murder <laughs> you, the audience, with our housekeeping. Yes. Go check out the Twitter Grubcast on Twit. No, it's at the grubby cast on twitter <laughs> the uh we cast. got a discord server that is linked in the description yes. i'm forcing myself to work on the discord server by promising you that it will be out in the present for you but in the future for me so now i have to work on it awesome how accountability works go check out the patreon we get a grub cast on the patreon we have a patron we have what the fuck? A Someone gave us money, and it's just my friend Mia. <laughs> Hi, Mia. Thanks for giving us three dollars a month. That's really cool of you. But also, fuck you. I hate you. Uh, the rest of you that give us money on the Patreon, we will just be increasingly aggressive to everyone who donates on the Patreon. Uh, Before we just dox you and come to your house. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's final the outcome. <laughs> Top tier patrons get home invaded. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we we will make your home go into the medium by which we mean it will not exist anymore. <laughs> and and the last thing, my man Et, we have some fan interaction. That's all I've said. To no you. way. That's all I've said. All I've said is fan interaction and refuse to elaborate. But now, finally, all secrets will be revealed because give we me, give me the info. Dear E.T., have fan art. No. We have two pieces of fan art. Both Impossible. out of the Doc Scratch DJ joke that you made. <laughs> two separate people have sent us their editions. Uh, one of which is now my fucking phone wallpaper, because it's really <laughs> fucking sick. Uh, first one comes from our boy... Uh, Sesame Oil 17 on Twitter. Uh, both the artists are going to be linked in the description. Uh, and on the video version of the podcast, I'm going to throw it up on screen right now. Look at this gif of Doc Scratch, character that you know nothing about. No, but being he a is sick DJ. He's going. Right and look, now. they put my little guy in the corner. <laughs> you know how like I did the art for the thing and yeah. I made like little kid kid versions of us? Look, there's me. I'm dancing <laughs> my, my little heart out. It's a GIF, but for some reason it exported as a video. I don't know. It's pretty sick. Yeah, no, that's dope. Yeah, it's awesome. And then the the other artwork that is now my fucking phone wallpaper. Look at how fucking Ooh. sick that is. Bro. Oh my god. This <laughs> one comes from uh, at Morality Calls on Twitter. That's fucking gorgeous. I would go to that rave right there. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? I want to go be there at Doc Scratch's di uh, disco. Is he a disco guy? Hey, disco guy. Uh, All right, both of you redraw this picture, but with Doc Scratch having like a disco afro and like sunglasses. <laughs> just, just, just make like minor edits to the things you already made. That's what, we're gonna, know, your workload yeah, never ends. We know we're that going, you made this out of the kindness of your heart, based on a joke. But man, no, I demand reworks. <laughs> I'm going, I put my fist down. I shake my fist at me. And that's it. That's all we got to get get out of the way. Thank you very much to the people that sent us fan art. I, yes, I we love, love it. You. It was amazing. It was fucking beautiful. And now, yo, Homestuck's pretty fucking cool, bro. Homestuck, how do you feel about, man. How do you feel about a Homestuck? Shit, I don't, 
I don't even know. I... <laughs> that confusion will remain for another 8,000 pages. <laughs> Let's just start off. Before we get back into the thick of things with the Homestuck, we start off, we meet a little boy. We meet a lovely little boy, the wayward vagabond. This lovely little man is walking through the desert, and he trips like a dumbass over some weird cylindrical object with a suburb logo. What could that mean? What could it possibly be? I don't know <laughs> for now, but maybe you'll know some other time. Fucking come back next week. <laughs> we're already we're already starting off with the ridiculous foreshadowing. Did you read this game facts? The game facts, yeah. Yeah. I think that there was stuff I referenced in the first episode that was in Act 2, because mm-hmm. I'm just stupid. <laughs> uh, I think the Game Facts is a great example of that. Yeah, so uh, the Game Facts, if I'm not mistaken, I feel like covers uh, a large deal of like the game mechanics in a clear way. Uh, before, it was all very vague to me. It was just kind of more conceptual, and I assumed they were just not going to cover it in any detail. How uh, the lathe and uh, the crux scythe dowels if i'm saying that right crux scythe cylinders we're keeping the cylinders we're doing the cylinders we're not do we're not indulging in this dowel tomfoolery <laughs> the crux scythe cylinders like i didn't expect them to really go into that and that to be like a reoccurring like fact of contention the kernel spray the kernel spray yeah, that's one of something they show right at the beginning of Act One. Is mm-hmm. the once he enters the the game, it splits in half and goes up and it goes down. What could that mean? I wonder. <laughs> and then they just start off with a whole ass video game. Which holy shit! We get like two shots. We get to see John's house on a big tower. Look at the Colonel Sprite. It's doing a thing. Boom! Play the fucking video game. And you get to walk around John's whole house, and it's so cool. Yeah, you I, actually have things. Like you to get to do. see the layout of like John's whole house, and now we know exactly where everything is. And you can see his backyard and his tire swing, <laughs> and, and and the fact that his house doesn't have power. What's going on? I mean, <laughs> but it does still have power. has power. Yeah. yeah. What's going on there? It's video games. It's video games. That's what's going on there. I do think it's cool that you're not just reading the comic, you're actually like living in it as a like a being able to operate within the world itself. Think about how fucking cool it must have been. Waiting like reading this comic day by day. There's a short break between act 1 and act 2. Act 2 comes back and there's just some normal panels and you're like, "All right, we're getting back That's into cool. it." And then the next day Hussy drops a whole Ooh, ass video game. game. You don't imagine just you would you would constantly be clicking on every tiny little thing just wringing it out of every ounce of content that you know is surely contained within whereas me and you have the luxury of we exist in a post homestuck timeline we could just click the next page yeah we can do whatever yeah (laughs) it's already out (laughs) we don't need to wring out every little bit of moisture from this damp rag of (laughs) the beginning of homestuck (laughs) act two we can we have the luxury of just moving on. But they had constant they had content starved fans out there. Yeah, what that were you were gonna do? Just, <gasps> I need Hussie, please. Homestuck, please, Homestuck, give me Homestuck. <laughs> God, I I love the the weird interactions between what we know now as WV, yeah, uh, yeah. his big fucking capital letters boy boy <laughs> get me a fucking can opener john i swear to god yeah like the, the, the wv's words are acknowledged by the characters as like pure thought speak mm-hmm. just going just straight into the in brain them. like a fucking andalite in, in, in animorphs you know, you know about them I, I don't they're like weird horse aliens and animorphs that they their whole race like talks by like speaking in thoughts huh. they're not telepaths like they can't read your mind but they they send their thoughts out into that's wv wv is an andalite <laughs> in disguise i did think it was weird it seems like he's operating on a system uh higher than even the server he's not like responding to them in pastor chum to talk to them they are feeling their effects in the universe just happened to them so i don't i'm not quite sure what that's about and why he has so much power in this weird deserty place it is definitely related to i'm about to fucking knock your socks off with a weird deserty place later on my socks (laughs) it is related to suburb clearly obviously um 
But other than that, we're not really sure what those machines are, are for at the moment. Later on, we do get to see there is a lot of weird machinery in this place that WV is in. But currently, this is a this is a mystery to us. Yeah. The bunny is not in the box. The bunny's not in the box. I don't remember why that happened. I just remember they point out that the bunny is not in the box. And I wrote it down. <laughs> it's it's very concerning. That's where you want the bunny to be. <laughs> the bunny is not there, but it will be soon. John will put the bunny back in the box. I swear to fucking God, it's gonna happen. The bunny. Uh, he opens up his pestered... I mean, his dad's PDA. We get to see our man, Fedora Freak, Fedora in Freak. the fucking thick of it. Surrounded by meteors. <laughs> Fedora Freak is now revealed at, here, but be through the meteors, that Fedora Freak is going to also play the game mm-hmm. in the background. He was waiting for Spurb to come out, too. I think it's implied that, I don't know, it's just something like he was going to do with his kid or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to hang out with my kid. We're going to play this video game. So I, I'm letting you know right now. Keep an eye out on Fedora Freak because we will get to see him like in the background, like play the game, like not not physically see him, <laughs> yeah, but, but like he'll be like texting the series. Of yeah, stuff. he'll talk to his serious business associates about what's like, going on. Guys, this suburb. is fucked. Yeah, this is crazy. How am I? <laughs> I thought I died. <laughs> uh, in the the serious business chat, he's talking about how he's like relocating all of his hats to like another safe location, <laughs> which I thought was great. <laughs> I gotta keep my hat safe. And around here is where we get a actual explanation of the alchemy system, like, in-universe. Yeah. Which is fucking sick. At least to some extent. So, you got your crook shooter. You got your fucking totem leg. You got your alchimeter. You got your pre-punched card. You get your crux sight. You put your crux sight in the totem leg. Mm-hmm. You stick the card in. It Oop. carves a totem. You put the totem... <laughs> In the, are you having like little sound effects over there? Yeah. I, I think that adds to the immersion. Keep that, keep that up. I got you. I got you. You can hit me with like rapper ad lib. So like, he puts the he puts the totem in the alchimeter and he hit. It. Yeah. Bow. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, and he 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 alchemizes whatever is on the card. I'm just gonna call it like it is. There's no reason for this to be this complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck do we not live in a society where you can just put the card in the alchimeter and it and you can make the thing? There's no reason for any of this. It'd be too easy. You're not trying to give it to the players. Yeah, we're not on baby bitch mode. <laughs> Suburb is the Dark Souls of Sims games. <laughs> it's a Souls like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, kinda. In the, in the sense that you do the, fight guys and die a lot. And yeah, man, your life is very much on the line. If you make minor mistakes, you will die <laughs> in real life. Can you imagine if Dark Souls was Sword Online? And if you died in Dark Souls, you died in real life? <laughs> Just a bunch of angry gamers dying by the thousands. Yeah, but you know, everyone's like, it's the next FromSoft masterpiece. I have to play it. I gotta play. No, I'm good. I won't die like those losers. Wait! <laughs> uh john talks to turn to godhead but yes we, we, my but favorite. our future site we know is dave now yeah talk to dave and in that conversation dave says quote i'll have to make a rap about i don't know morgan freeman or something being the president it'll be called obama made it so no one gives a shit about black presidents in movies anymore <laughs> did you notice he is rapping about that like, yeah he does rap about that in the text in the dialogue together <laughs> i don't remember when that is but i know that john talks to him at some point and he is making a sick rap about morgan freeman being the president and that's when i knew i loved dave he is fucking awesome he's like my friend's dying i'm about to sit i'm about to spit a sick fr- uh freestyle and just yeah we get a little bit of time with rose before we hit dave but we get to see dave pretty early on and he's one of like your main ta- uh, cast members i do want to point out a uh, weird reference. Do you remember when um, Rose opened up the grimoire and showed it to people? Yeah, This yeah. was something I referenced last episode as being an act one, but it just wasn't. <laughs> you get to see the weird, like, Cthulhu ripoffs in her grimoire. Yeah, And she cool. tries to put the grimoire on the Strife Specibus, and she's like, I'm not fucking with that shit. <laughs> but specifically, one of the drawings in the grimoire was, like, a weird window-looking thing with, like, a plug. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a reference to Problem Sleuth. I th- I have not finished Problem Sleuth, but I'm pretty sure there is a weird, like, portal, other dimension thing that is that. It's like a window that you, like, plug into the wall, and it turns on, and it then is a window. 
and you could go through it to like other dimensions or something. We're going to read Problem Sleuth for Grubcast at some point. I don't okay. know when, but it is going to happen. But I do want to point them out when I see them and I do recognize them as a Problem Sleuth thing. Do you want to, do you want to introduce Dave? You want to talk about Dave? Dave? Uh, yeah. Because this is when we get to Dave. Yeah, so Dave, we get introduced to Dave through the psych out. Uh, that's the first one that happens where it's like, I think they're like, oh, we're going to focus on Rose this time? Or not Rose, uh... Uh, I assume it's Gardenostic. They like flash to like a girl, and then they're like, "Actually, we're not at all correct, talking yeah. about her." <laughs> do they introduce Dave through the psych out? I completely forgot about that. I think they do. I feel like that's what happened. I think so. Uh, but yeah, they're like, "Oh, here, actually, <laughs> we're gonna talk about my boy Dave, <laughs> and he is the most based individual. <laughs> He's so fucking cool. <laughs> He's got a bunch of ninja swords and fucking turntables in his room. He's baller, but uh." He cuts the weird name thing in half. He has no time for that shit. He's, you're gonna call me by my fucking name. And then He's his like, glasses do, Dave. like, the glint that's, like, Ding. very pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is a fandom favorite. There was a time where you go to, like, your local anime convention, I don't know, like, Comic-Con in the, in the boonies, fucking backwoods, we're at our backwoods convention, and you'd see, like, 20 Daves. <laughs> They were everywhere. You can still find them in the wild occasionally. Uh, rogue Dave cosplayers that have just lost all respect for the human race and have decided to become a post-ironic individual <laughs> Dave Strider. Yeah, how ironic can you be? Like ten layers of irony, bro. I'm only Dave. I'm only dressed up as Dave ironically because I don't think Dave would honestly dress up as Dave. Yeah, Dave only <laughs> is himself as a bit that none of us can possibly understand. Uh, I do want to point out one of the things you will con- uh, you will contemplate bleeding like a goat for ironically humorous purposes at a later date. That just, keep, does just put a pin in that. Yeah, <laughs> just put a pin in that for a while. I'm gonna be waiting for that. That'll yeah. be like the magnum opus of the whole franchise. Talk about hash map. You 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 called out hash map by name in the last episode because you yeah. mentioned it once <laughs> how fucking cool is hash map bro it's it's pretty neat i uh i think it's probably the most effective syllabi uh, or uh syllabix i've seen thus far but having to do like a real quick mental equation based on the lettering of the item is kind of odd also i wonder how it would affect if like maybe you had a different name for something than what it actually was could you change what you call it to he does that where in the comic really yeah Did I miss that? uh he turns the blender into the whirling blade picture <laughs> uh to get the nunchaku into a different slot he just calls them nunchucks and he's like it would have been cool to use the official name but you know I, you, gotta, you gotta make some <laughs> he calls the skateboard he's going to put the skateboard in it and then it won't work and he's like give me a second uh, you take the wheeled ride <laughs> that's, what, that's what it's called wheeled there ride. is a point where he uses the letter y as a consonant instead of a vowel in order to change the <laughs> like value of it so there is a lot of like fucking around like that that it makes his his fetch mode is super entertaining mm-hmm. it and makes it makes ah, just perfect chef's kiss he does so much good shit <sighs> sweet bro and hella jeff Oh, wait, real quick. Did you notice that um to use the item in this hash map, he had to come up with a phrase like involving using the item that matched the number of letters in it? I didn't notice that. Yeah, when he, he would have to say something like clean up with the towel, like you, you that phrase like clean up would have to match the I don't know if that's the actual phrase he used, but it would have to mm-hmm. match in the hash map equation the slot that the towel is in for him to then take the towel out and oh, use God. it what a complicated life and all of this he he mentions to it he, he alludes to it in this act all of this is to to facilitate like silidex battles with his brother that are rat battles <laughs> yeah <laughs> they throws down bars with his brother and it's like that one gif where he says he yells stop and like the ninja sword like flies out of his yeah. cell legs. Imagine that for just for that rancorous crow. Oh, that crow is so fucking rancorous. Bro. That little bitch. <laughs> yeah. What do you, What do you want to say about Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff? I'm actually more interested on like uh, the uh, side notes you have here about Hussy. And he was apparently this is just beef that he has. Yeah, Hussy on the forums for some fucking thing. I don't remember. Some guy was like, hey, guys, on these forums, or like a fan 
forum for this thing. I made my own comic that's like similar to this other thing. Check it out. And Hussey just lambasted this guy. Just absolutely, <laughs> how fucking dare you force me to like look at these panels that you've drawn that are garbage. So Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff is Hussey like taking this guy's comic and being like, I'm going to make it good now. Oh, this God. is better than your work. And he makes Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff. <laughs> and it exists to be in universe memes for the characters to reference because this is from you know 2009 2010 at this point can you imagine if rose i don't know mentioned like a cat video and they're like whoa <laughs> check out this sick cat video yeah. <laughs> or if john did like a troll face how dated that would be yeah like actual reward memes in there it's moving way too fast to keep up yeah but sweet bro and hella jeff is eternal he just completely sidesteps that issue it's just mm-hmm. not a problem anymore it's, it's a meme in their world so it can't be outdated to us exactly and multiple characters do reference it as that i did write down a couple of my favorites as well the uh <laughs> Where are your pants? Haha, <laughs> I was banging your mom for a minute there. <laughs> and now you're banging her. <laughs> and then of course the the classic, which is fuck I'm falling down all these stairs, which I think is the oh. <laughs> by far the most referenced one. And and I think I made a D&D meme out of it for my for the party I play with. Really? Where like I pushed someone down the stairs and then I made the meme. <laughs> Out of the sweet bro and hella gem. Fuck. Fuck, I'm falling down all these stairs. I warned you, bro. I told you, dog. And then there's the how high do, do you even have to be to do something <laughs> like that? Absolutely fucking incredible. Sweet bro and hella Jeff will continue to be referenced far into the future. I'm glad. <laughs> incredible. I look Hussey, forward to it. I think he sold a sweet bro and hella Jeff like hardcover book at some point. Really? And you can still buy it, but it costs like fucking $500 or something because they don't make it anymore. I will <laughs> look at reviews online, I guess. <laughs> it's like the it's like the something spoon. I don't know. Something about Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff, they look for a spoon. <laughs> I don't know. I have on here that Dave goes to memispaintadventures.com and he sees the Midnight Crew. Yeah. That's what I was going to call the podcast originally. Oh, the Midnight Crew? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a pretty sense. good name, but only because the Midnight Crew is a good name in yeah. and of itself. And I was like, no one, if anyone looks up Midnight Crew, like they're not going to find us. Yeah. Like, it's not going to happen. <laughs> they're going to find the MS Adventure. They're going to find the MS Paint Adventure people or like some other shit. Uh, not us. <laughs> Grubcast. But now you can find Grubcast if you look up Grubcast on YouTube.com right now. Go do it, gentle listener. <laughs> Even though you're listening to us currently. Yeah, we know you're already uh, sold, but please, <laughs> Dave, seriously, dudes be like worshiping me left and right. I can't hardly <laughs> walk down the street without stepping over torsos of the prostrate. I mean, damn, like the <laughs> like there's this scruffy little shit at my feet, an orphan or something, I don't know, face flushed to the pavement. I'm like, dude, you listening for a stampede of buffalo or something? He bra- He braves a look at me. Then gives my shoes a little kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and scurries the fuck off. That was a kiss for the audience. <laughs> oh, man. And then Rose. Rose and him have such good chemistry. Like, I, I put at the end there that heavy is the crown. Is that your response to that? Yeah. Their dialogue is so fucking funny. I love Dave and Rose's chemistry in terms of just how well their dialogue plays off each other yeah. because dave very much goes into like heavy irony territory and rose is such a sarcastic like wordy piece of shit mm-hmm. and they bounce off of each other really really well i wrote interactivity is off the charts with these flashes what did i what did i write that down for this is oh right it was the, the scene comes up no it was the uh it was the DJ table, you get to like make little songs. Oh out yeah, of it. you can make a sick ass beat. It was so fucking cool. <laughs> I thought that was so dope. <laughs> Did you make any cool songs with it? Uh, no, but I'm gonna send it to my producer. Have him like make a sick beat. Out of it. I'll <laughs> yeah. be like, bro, throw all the work you've been doing out of the way. Make a sick beat. We out just of need this. Absolutely. <laughs> you have to like screen record it to get the audio out of it. Yeah, that's a great idea. You should actually do that. Oh my god, when you inevitably make the Grubcast rap, that's what you should use. Is is this... Is that, uh... Oh my god. Use Dave's beats and rap over them. Absolutely fucking incredible. They call me the godhead, how I turn tech. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Bars. Bars. 
uh, go ahead and talk about fucking ro- the Rose Switch because you brought it up earlier. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, now I'm getting a better idea of like the relationship between the parents and the children. It feels like uh, Rose absolutely hates her mom, or at the very least, hates how how fake she views her. If that makes sense. It's interesting. You're you're right. Like John's dad is this very wholesome figure that John just kind of gets annoyed with. Like, mm-hmm. oh, my dad's fucking baking me cakes again. Oh, another cake, Dad. Oh, Come man. on. <laughs> but it does seem like Rose and her mom are engaged in a bloody battlefield yeah, of psychological warfare. A bit more vitriol. Like it's like ugh. not a bit. Like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot. Like, she got her mom a vacuum, and then she got it encased in... Bronze? Know, it is bronze, yes. Because they, they say, look at the copper vacuum, and then the, the text says, it's bronze, but it's whatever. Bronze. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> and the uh, my favorite one is where she draws a really shitty picture of Jasper's, her cat, because mm-hmm. she's fucking 13. <laughs> And her mom gets like a thousand dollar frame and <laughs> welds it to their fridge. <laughs> but yeah, there is a lot of tension, for lack of a better word. There. Wish I I wish I could see it from a more neutral perspective. Like I like a uh, that we're seeing it from the children's perspective and that they view the world in this very uh through this one uh very myopic lens. But man. <laughs> Are, her, are the parents really that bad, you know? I'm not going to say exactly how or in what capacity, mm-hmm. but we do get to see uh, from the point of view of, of these characters later. Okay, okay. I will not say any more than that. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to be something like, oh man, my mom is just so fucking passive aggressive. She does all this shit and then we finally get to view from her mom's perspective and she's just like, man, I fucking love my daughter so much. She's so cool. <laughs> Everything about her. I just want to frame up this like, even the shitty drawing. drawing. I, I, I think it's amazing. she made it. Yeah. And I was just like, my fucking piece of shit mom. Yeah, she's so fucking, ah, like... I hate that she's insulting my artwork. <laughs> the longest version of, of the psychological warfare in play is because of that jaspers she welds the frame to the door and then after that she calls her mom a shrew with the, <laughs> with the magnets and so which begins this very long train of one-upmanship where mom buys her like a new w packet and then she oh, yeah. writes her mom a thank you note notarized in blood for the w's and then her mom puts a nice little pillow oh, under it, it. <laughs> how would you continue that train because rose has a very distinct she's like i'm gonna embroider something onto the pillow like because <laughs> you can't just sit down and take that shit you yeah. gotta fire back what After you gonna something do like that uh it, it's gotta be it's gotta be something big because the amount of effort you have to do to put that little pillow underneath that small ass uh note on the it's on the very bottom of the fridge too yeah you gotta bend all the way down like, your mom's really tall <laughs> yeah your mom's like a giant fucking massive <laughs> Embroidering the pillow is nice. I think I would completely take it off the fridge and just get the whole thing encased. <laughs> put it on a stand. <laughs> get a nice display going, deco lights in the shit. Encase the fridge itself in a display. <laughs> get the whole fridge It's like a monument to your mom's thankfulness. We can't use it anymore, but mom, look, you just, oh. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. It feels like one of those, like, thank you so much behind gritted teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rose is a very, like, nice and endearing, silly character, and I love her. <laughs> she we get to finally see that side of her as we get more. Like, she makes the little mustache out of the W, <laughs> and she, like, moves it up and down really fast, and I think that's really funny. You can't help but be a little silly. <laughs> Mom shows up and does her ironic housewife routine, which is just housework. Yeah, which is just her cleaning the house. Yeah, she's. And I do want to point out, they make a note that she has an empty bucket. To try and say, like, oh, it's an ironic housewife routine. Uh, she's using a Swiffer. She yeah. doesn't need one. She doesn't need a bucket Yeah, for that. it's fine that it's empty. Like, she's just doing housework. <laughs> it's fine, Rose. <laughs> Calm down, please. It's not that deep. She does a sick youth roll. Do you know about the you, 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 like the youth roll? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a reference to Problem Sleuth as well. Where, really? where our boy in Problem Sleuth would do a sleuth roll. A sleuth roll. <laughs> somersault across the room. And I imagine all the I imagine all the kids are big fans of all the MS adventures that Hussey puts out. Because it seems like, at the very least, 
uh, John and Dave both have actively interacted with that and have been like what seems to be excited about the new issue. Yeah, John has a Problem Sleuth poster in his room. Oh, I didn't notice that. And also on his little game cabinet in the very first act, you know how you can kind of like look at his games? I think one mm-hmm. of them is a Problem Sleuth game as well. So, you no, know, the the if only as a means of blatant self from promotion <laughs> yeah. the characters are into ms Payne adventures i was like man this is meta as fuck when i first saw it this continues into like hussie's later work as well like in psychological uh, in psychological's one of the the main character in that has a like homestuck character on her wall <laughs> um so this this is a thing that continues where hussie characters will like be fans of his past work <laughs> but how <laughs> I don't fucking know. It, it happens. They have problems, Sleuth. They have MS Paint Adventures, apparently. I mean, ostensibly, this is just Earth. They're yeah. just on Earth, and then, and then shit gets fucked. But, like, like everything up until the start of Homestuck is just Earth it's as we know it, progressing to that is. point. Like, I know in the um, epilogues, way the fuck later, the bit of them that I read before I couldn't finish them because of how much I hated them... <laughs> Uh, John does, I mean, not John, Dave does mention, like, yo, Earth got ended in the middle of Obama's presidency. We have no idea what he could have done. <laughs> and Dave just, like, constantly references Obama because of how much he thinks he's cool. <laughs> so, so this, Earth is just normal Earth until it ends. Mm-hmm. So up until now, like, everything that we know as history has happened up until now in Homestuck, including MS Paint Adventures. Mm-hmm. Except for this weird fictional MS Paint Adventures that is the Midnight Crew that only exists in Homestuck as an MS Paint Adventure that Hussey would have written, but not in real life, which means it's an MS Paint Adventure that only exists in an MS Paint Adventure. <laughs> fucking kill me. Hussey, you hack. You absolute <laughs> fucking hack. I hate you, Andrew So self referential But I also love yeah. you, Andrew Hussey. So self referential So meta and crazy. Oh, um... Green text? Garden Gnostic? Yeah. What the fuck? Why does she know the future? <laughs> no idea. Did you did you catch that? No. She references really early on. She's talking to Rose, and she's like, I, I've sent John's present to him, but he won't get it. But he'll find it later when he needs it, but he'll lose it. And then later on in Act 2, the present in the car that is green, so we can reasonably connect it to Garden. her, yeah. falls into the, the pit. He never gets to open it. She knows. Ahead of time. That is weird. (laughs) Why? What the fuck? Also, more mysteries surrounding her. I think later on, Dave mentions when when he's talking to her, I I can never get my head around your goofy fetch modus. Dave uses hash map. What is, why is he why is it hard to, uh, for him to understand like what's goofier than that i don't the answer is you have to freestyle <laughs> rap to get your items out could you imagine bro what would, what would your silidex be what would your fetch modus be bro now that i have a better understanding i think i'm just gonna have to go with dave's it seems the most fun <laughs> it does seem fun i probably just go with like John Egbert, because <laughs> I'm too stupid to understand. <laughs> I, I gave up trying to calculate like all the hash map shit. Mm-hmm. I was just like, no, I'm not. I'm gonna trust you, Andrew. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna that, trust that fall works. <laughs> into your arms, Andrew Hussey. And I'm gonna trust that you did the math, and I'm not gonna worry about it. Yes, strife, strife, strife with mom. This fucking music, a banger. I this is one of my favorite songs in early Homestuck. I really love a grieve. It is so good. I like it more than showtime showtime's like definitely fair. more iconic but mm-hmm. i do like aggrieve more it is based as fuck and i love it a certified hood classic <laughs> did you did you read the data structures for assholes page <laughs> yeah when it switches back to john <laughs> i wrote down my favorite quote from that which was in the very bottom and like the <laughs> asshole tips mm-hmm. it wasn't even in the main text and it was purse your lips together to form a stiff pucker apply them firmly to my <laughs> rear end i now pronounce you man and wife now get in the kitchen and make my ass some dinner bitch <laughs> make my ass some dinner <laughs> incredible <laughs> And that's just what I guess. Yeah, there are weird differences to real life, even though ostensibly this is Earth, like data structures for assholes. <laughs> Incredible book. And then we have two strifes back to back. Yeah, he fights the imp. John has to put the bunny back in the box. He d- he does. He puts that motherfucking bunny back in the box. That's what I was alluding to earlier. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <is> incredible. <laughs> Notice that that imp was wearing the clown. Yeah, yeah. It had like a Harlequin hat. Why? 
That makes no sense. I have no idea. <laughs> I thought that was so thinking. weird. Uh, if I had to guess, uh, no, because John, it, I would imagine it immediately ties to John's dad in some way, or at very least, like John from some like other part of time, because uh, those are the only two characters we see uh, strongly tied to uh, Harlequins. But John's dad is in the universe and then gets kidnapped by the imps for some reason. Okay, so you very clearly missed it because you're fucking stupid and I hate you. Hey. Um, later on, when he's talking to Nana Sprite, yeah, we're yeah. skipping ahead a little bit here, but she describes the prototyping process of the Colonel Sprite and how that yeah. affects uh, the medium. Rose prototyped the Harlequin doll. Ah, uh, when it hatched. Yeah. Okay. And so, so now they all have a Harlequin shit. So now everything's just Harlequin themed because, oh man, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. That is very unfortunate. It makes it a little hard to take them seriously, the go- goofy little limps. I oh, love them. Oh my god, demons. Wait, they're jesters? That's a little more adorable. I can live with that. <laughs> John climbs the Esha ladder to Plucky Tot. That's his level. Yeah. The, the insane vernacular of Spurb just continues. So, Nana Sprite. <laughs> Man, what the fuck is there to say about Nana Sprite? That is traumatizing as all hell. <laughs> like, is it? John, I get that John doesn't or didn't know his grandmother when she died, but bearing that, like, if he knew her in any serious capacity, that'd be very traumatic to have her just kind of ghostily haunting him and fused with the game mechanics in some weird way. But I guess now he gets to bond with his grandma as a yeah, silly to, prankster. Now he gets to meet his mom, and John <laughs> loves being a silly prankster. Except that she's also baking goods. In yeah, ridiculous he was really speeds. upset about that. He cannot escape. He's like, fuck. I fucking hate baking goods. He abjured it so hard. <laughs> he did abjure the hell out of those fucking cookies. <laughs> oh, also, I feel like it was it was really comical to me to experience, like, oh, my grandmother came back to life, and I was fused with this game thing weird and then grandma's like oh sonny uh yeah so now that you've played the video game uh the world's gonna end in the infinite war with good and evil <laughs> and i'm just like grandma shit. <laughs> grandma, <laughs> time out <laughs> oh yeah and john's like i can't wait to save the world she's like no nah, world's fucked like, yeah no, no you're they... you're fated to lose this encounter no it's not that they're fated to lose i mean the the white chess pieces are fated to lose. The players aren't. The the idea is she's just saying, like, no, no, the world is fucked. Like, that's just the premise. The premise is that the world is completely destroyed. There's nothing you can do about it. Like, move on. It's done. Everyone you've <laughs> ever known and loved is dead. Is dead now. Except Dad Egbert. <laughs> except for Dad, who is... True American hero, Dad Egbert. Kidnapped, I think? Yeah, he is kidnapped, isn't he? By He's in, like, demons. a weird purple place. What's that weird purple place? Hmm... It's Rose's thoughts. <laughs> I don't know what the weird purple place is. That might be relevant later. Mm. I'm just going to throw it out of my mind completely. Yeah, just completely <laughs> oh. do not consider that in any form now. Yeah, Nana describes the medium. You're in the game dimension. And how the game works. In the middle of the medium, there's a weird cloud planet called Skya. Sky. Chess people fight. That's all she's got, basically. <laughs> Oh, and she says you must solve the ultimate riddle. What's the ultimate riddle? I don't know. That seems so cool. I hope we find out what the ultimate riddle is. That'd be pretty cool if we did. Uh, it would be pretty neat if we could figure out what the ultimate riddle is. And then we just switch back to fucking Dave. <laughs> and I need you to understand at this point that this Dave that we are seeing like when we're playing as is in the past. This is a past Dave. Because you switch over to Dave and... It, one of the commands is like, you know, get into the game and save your friend's life. And he's like, none of my friends are in danger and I have no desire yeah. to play this game right now. Yeah, he's... <laughs> and if you remember earlier on when you're talking to him as like John or Rose or someone, he's like, I lost the game. But that that Dave starts by having the game in his possession. And then we get to see him lose the game. Okay. So Homestuck likes to tell its story very non-chronologically. It yeah. will constantly jump back and forth to different points in time i assumed it was just his inner monologue being uh ironically ironic <laughs> like he was just like 
Um, I should say my friends, but I'm fine. To be fair, <laughs> it could be that as well. I could see it. I could see Dave just being like, "Ah, oh, he's chilling." Uh, I know he was like complaining about monsters and demons and stuff, but it's probably whatever. <laughs> Let yeah. me make this sick beat. <laughs> he does make sick beats, and he also starts thrashing up something uncanny brutal on his quest for mad snacks, yo. <laughs> that's also what he does. Mad snacks. I mean, is, is that's his um. The Xbox game that's just Tony Spock, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater with like Doritos. <laughs> just a lot of those are involved, which honestly, that seems like an objective improvement to me. It sounds Tony like Hawk, a fun game. <laughs> great game. Put some fucking Mountain Dew in there. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to find a way to get this way rude hunger under control. Shit is basically flying off the hook. It's like shit wants nothing to do with the hook. The hook is dead, that shit. <laughs> How do you feel about the Smuppets? Oh man, are you talking about all the Ventriloquist dummies his brother's into? Not just the just not just the ventriloquist dummies, although them as well. All the fucking what puppets fell from the ceiling with this with their big round bulbous <laughs> bottoms. <laughs> I don't quite understand how Dave views irony. I get that he's I, in my head. I think he like has this like superficial like vision of what cool is. I mean, he's thirteen. Yeah, like so. Any like thirteen year old would. He just kind of like has like, well, cool is just kind of whatever the coolest guy I know told me it is. So that's what cool is. But I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. That that does feel like something a 13 year old would think mm-hmm. is that he just is his brother, but with different sunglasses. <laughs> and I think that's very funny is that he's trying to be cool and sick in the way that his brother is cool and sick. sick. Because <laughs> do not mistake me. His bro is cool as fuck. <laughs> and I love him. Why is he obsessed with puppets? Um. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there's there's not really a reason given. I mean, they're I guess they're sick until they they're no longer sick and they're weird and terrifying and involved in strange murder torture films and fucking little cow, bro. Little cow. Little man. cow is actually a fucking horror movie slasher. He's just <laughs> constantly teleporting around, and Dave just accepts it. He's like, "Oh, hey, little cow, how you doing there?" <laughs> Hmm. I don't like the way you're looking at me, Cal. It's a little... Uh, could you stop that, please? <laughs> nice abscond, dude. I don't know why I wrote that down. It was a pretty nice abscond. It was a very nice abscond, wherever it was. I'm sure it was really cool. Oh my god, we get to John and, and Rose is dropping objects on the imps, and the, the, <laughs> the inanimate objects get to level up. Like, the fridge gets to level up to a boy Skylark rank, oh, which man. is incredible. And then this conversation from Rose's perspective happens. We've only played a little bit as Dave at this point. And then all of a sudden, Dave says to Rose, I am enrobed in chafing, wriggling, god-fucking-damned puppet pelvis. An obscenely long, coarse Kermit cock is being dragged across my <laughs> anguished face. Course, this Kermit is serious. Cock. I'm just saying, if I see one more salt, bulbous bottom being, like, kind of jutting out and impudent or whatever, I'm gonna fly <laughs> off the handle. I'm gonna do some sort of acrobatic fucking pirouette off the handle and win, like, a medal <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> god, I love Dave. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. How do you feel about the safe saga? The safe is dead. Oh, the safe is dead. Okay. It died. A heroic and they dead. Dropped it all the, through the ceiling. Did, the safe got like a Viking funeral. And they did say, quote, it, its soul will be sent to Vault Hollow. <laughs> Vault Hollow. Oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about fucking alchemy. Fucking alchemy, bro. Oh, my God. It's so cool. We talked about it earlier a little bit. But now that we have the punch design X in the mix, oh my god, Alchemy's so cool. He Does he build the pogo hammer in this act? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we get to finally understand how Alchemy works, which is that, as we said before, you know, you get the correct site, you put the correct site in the totem lathe, mm-hmm. you put the card in the totem lathe, carves the totem, put the totem in the alchemeter, make thing. But now that we have the punch design X in, the, in play... And John has an infinite amount of capture log cards. He can just continuously clone capture log cards forever. Then John can now make... I, he can clone whatever items he wants, and he can use like overlapping cards to mix items to create cool combination items. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> it's a level of power that is nearing God tier. <laughs> oh, well... well <laughs> I don't, you don't know what you just said. You don't know what you just said. He, he doesn't fucking know, guys. He doesn't know. Nobody tell him. Nobody no, tell him. Somebody tell me. I don't know. No, no, no don't do that. 
Um, yeah, the the alchemy system is fucking cool, and they're gonna make a lot of cool shit with it. There is going to be pages and pages of just characters alchemizing items. Yeah, I can only see while. this becoming just a, a very expansive thing. Like, oh, I found what. Uh, a piece of shit i'll mix it with this rock and now i have diamonds and carbon wait <laughs> just <laughs> i can't I, I can't imagine where it's gonna go but i can only see it getting uh, increasingly ridiculous with this type of a uh, comic we only got a little taste a we got the pogo hammer touch. we got the hammer pogo ride i think because there's like two different ways that you can fucking alchemize and it's cool, and I love it, and you're going to get to see a lot more of it. And you get to see, like, what each character decides to alchemize, and it's mm -hmm. sick. How they view the world and mixing with this very strange and vague system. And when when John hits the pogo hammer, hits the fucking imp, he one-hits that imp. <laughs> one-shot kill. After how long it took to kill that other imp for the bunny, he yeah. one-shots the imp with the pogo hammer, his bounces hammer. all the way up to the top of his fucking house, and then Rose catches him in a bed, and he goes to sleep. And goes to sleep. <laughs> he goes to be a little sleepy boy. And he sees some, like, clouds and shit. Dreams about weird stuff and a shadowy guy. Mm. Do you remember what was in the clouds? Harry Anderson was in the clouds. That was Harry one of the Anderson? Things. Yeah, and also fruit gushers. <laughs> oh, okay. That I remember. Did you notice anything about the shape of the mysterious figure? Not that I mentally noted. Hmm. All right, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> he was oddly shaped. <laughs> <laughs> John bees the imp and absconds the fuck out of there. Nice abscond. <laughs> nice abscond, bro. <laughs> we get to one of the coolest flashes in this. Ascend to the highest point of the building. Yo. That was pretty dope. fucking shit. <laughs> I did enjoy that. He's walking up the fucking steps. He's got Cal. Uh, I do want it to be note the name of the song. The name of the song in this flash yeah. is... Upward movement, parentheses, Dave Owns. <laughs> Dave Owns. That is the name of the song. <laughs> it is super fucking cool. He does all those ninja backflips. He teleports a little bit. And that's where we get to what you mentioned earlier. The times two psych out combo. Oh yeah, double psych out. <laughs> that e. was wombo combo. Talk to me about WV. Man. I know you wanna. First, first uh, let's, not, let's not disrespect... Uh, my man, the mayor. Of course, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, he's a man of public office. He's he's earned that title, and he treats every can fairly. <laughs> I'm very curious on who the uh who the mayor is. I th originally thought it was going to be like some sort of future version of John, maybe just Whoa. kind of wandering through yeah i was <laughs> i didn't know what to think i was just like man we're in the desert what is happening <laughs> he found the thing but uh this dude acts very new to the concepts and what the big kicker for me was uh the well one he didn't react to seeing himself on the screen he would have been like oh john me <laughs> he's he reads that book of human etiquette that makes me think oh he's not human <laughs> he, he is it, not they have to specify human etiquette why well they talk about a lot of he has like uh quote weak flimsy digits <laughs> but he has like carapace skin yeah carapace skin yeah, he he's has not a person he's not a human being some sort of alien life form he also kind of looks underneath all his wrappings he looks kind of like the imps to me so I could also see him being, uh, I could also see him being one of the, just like creations in the medium, like just one of the game things. I, I'm just gonna go out and say it. You're you're correct. Oh, sick! He's not an imp, but First he guess. is a creation of suburb. Okay, so he's just some sort of man. So he's very good guess. He's some sort of like spurb thing that found a spurb base in spurb. I assume, and. The base gives him access to view the players in it? Admin type beat, you know, like something that watches that. I only have more questions now, but that aside. It's uh, not just John either. Later it's on. It's not he, just John. He, yeah, he activates the screens and we see the wizard in Rose's house. And we also see Dave, Dave uh, with a... I think he has a sword through a monster. No, 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 no. It's Dave and he has a sprite. Yes, that's a what it was. Bird sprite. It's a bird sprite. But Dave's not even in the game yet. Yeah, he Dave's not lost in the game. game. Rose isn't even in the game yet. Huh. 
So what's going on there? So th wait, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> okay, so okay, so wandering vagabond, he he can see. It's the wayward vagabond. Thank you, <laughs> fucking baby. <laughs> He's he's wandering. I was I was describing him his moving specific. Anyway, uh, our boy the mayor he can see those characters, but they're not in the game yet. Cause oh, what well, the is. fuck? Yeah, but Dave specifically is for sure not because he's looking for his brother's copy of the game. Yeah. So I guess maybe that's his brother's kernel, and his brother's already playing the game. But it it seemed like it was color coordinated with him. I don't know. That is cool. But that, yeah, that's nutty. Uh, I didn't even think about that. But yeah, the mayor, uh, I do, uh, like his introduction. Like, it harkens back to when we first get introduced to John, and it was like, go get your arms from the chest. And he's just like, bro, I have two arms right here. What do you <laughs> mean? <laughs> it's not even that. It's like, go retrieve, and he just says, got him. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> we got this under control <laughs> that's handled <laughs> like too easy and then uh he goes to pick something up and you expect it to be put into another silidex but he is obviously without one because when he picks it up he has to carry multiple objects and it seems very clunky and now i understand why you would even use a silidex system that seems so convoluted and complex because otherwise you can only carry like three things or however much your arms can carry i guess yeah, they mention it very briefly in the very beginning of Act 1, where when he capsulogs logs uh, Colonel Sassikers, mm -hmm. where he's like, this would be very unwieldy to, to carry without a Silodex, but we do get to see that impractical use yeah. of w WV is trying to hold all these fucking cans, and he just, he can't. He just and then, can't do And then it. they say, like, look at your watch, and he's like, all right, and he, he drops all the cans <laughs> on the ground and looks at his watch. <laughs> Uh, or it's not his watch. He has like a barcode on his arm. Oh yeah, yeah, some sort of marketing. What the fuck is that barcode? No What's going idea. On there? Whoa. Oh, the um, he goes to the other room in the thing, and he gets the purifier. Remember the purifier? The purifier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know what the fucking purifier? It's cool. And he eats pumpkins, and he steals a pumpkin from somewhere, <laughs> and he eats that one also. So the a purifier can a purify through space and time. What the fuck? <laughs> that that seems a little busted. I would talk to the. I mean, it's the, not busted. I would like talk they, to the game developers about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, they 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 do go out of their way to talk about WV. He tries to reappearify the pumpkin from before, but he can't because that will create a paradox because yeah. he wouldn't have been able to eat it already, mm -hmm. and so it creates like ghost paradox slime. <laughs> it turns into a slime. Is that it? Is that everything before the big boy? I think so. I think that's it. S W V Ascend. Now, did you watch this more than once? Uh, no, I only got. Do you have one any idea time. what the fuck happened in it? Not really. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I, I like this flash a lot because there's a lot of really cool shit in it. That really Look cool dope. shit <laughs> is not <laughs> really shown or explained very well at all. Mm -hmm. So I, I watched it like three or four times and took took play by play notes. So I'm about to blow blow your mind with some shit. Okay. So that he he's in the big cylinder. The countdown in WV's big cylinder ends. Mm -hmm. Right. Starts to fly over to the west, and it flies past a place that it show it's like a big crater, and then it goes back in time to show that that same place is where John's oh, house yeah. used to be, meaning that WV is on Earth. All this shit that we're seeing Wayward Vagabond do is on Earth, not in the medium. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and uh, he keeps going west. Oh, oh my god, yeah. And then, and like, where John's house was? Like, like John's house gets destroyed by the meteor, which we saw in Act 1. Mm -hmm. And then, like, a tree grows out of it. And yeah. then the tree grows a big like gray apple that has the suburb logo and you're like what the fuck does any of this mean what <laughs> yeah and that's only like the very beginning of it because then he keeps flying westward and then he sees a volcano and then that volcano is also hit by a meteor even though it's years in the past how did it get hit by a suburb <laughs> meteor yeah. in the past who was playing suburb before the game came out and then and then there's like a temple that's like a frog and like, like they build a frog temple and that's 
gonna be important. No. <laughs> like, that's gonna be important. No way. But you don't know what any of that fucking means yet. I, but I do. I'm so lost. That but now, whole flesh. we kind of get some, ooh, God, what's gonna happen next act type of things, where it kind of cuts to mom rose's mom like looks out at rose like about to get fucked by the fire and rose's mom opens up like a secret lab underneath the jasper's mausoleum okay all right (laughs) and then dave is about to fucking fight his bro on his roof and it looks fucking sick yeah it doesn't pretty good Dad is in a weird purple space with the imps. That's he's what you were talking about earlier. He's yeah. captured. He's in some weird purple thing. He's captured by the bad guys. And then WV lands at the frog temple. And that's like it. That's it's it. the end of act two. <laughs> end so of you, act two. The end of act one is like this big climactic, oh god, what's going to happen to our boy John? And the end of act two is like, I don't know what any of that I'm was. so lost. And they're like, all right, cool, close curtains. Close the curtains. <laughs> Fucking next time we're going to figure out we why you're very all confused. of this means. <laughs> that was on purpose. We wanted you lost when you saw this. <laughs> like, I... I there's no way that you wouldn't have to rewatch this to catch this. Because the first time you watch it, you're like, I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> I just didn't think a rewatch would help me. <laughs> I was no, like, I had man, to go through I don't know what's happening. And like, keep pausing it to like take notes on like what the fuck was happening <laughs> in this like two minute animation. But that being said, what a huge step up from the end of Act 1. Like mm. we watched the animation for the end of Act 1. We were like, yeah. damn, this is fucking cool. And that was like 30 seconds. And this was like a whole ass two minute thing with like plot exposition. We're going to start hitting the first holy shit flashes in Act 3. Okay. Like this was the stepping stone. WV Ascend is awesome. But that is like the the final piece where like Hussey is now ascended to to godhood. Mm -hmm. And in Act 3, we're going to see some of my favorite animations in Mm -hmm. the comic. The ending animation of Act 3 is, like, what I consider to be the first holy fuck flash. And there's a lot of DNA in in that from WV Ascend. Okay. So, get fucking hype. Any closing statements about Act 2 of Homestuck? Um, uh, really fun read. Uh, I still like the first act better. Really? Yeah, a hot take. I really enjoyed it. Like, don't get me wrong, they were both, like, amazing. It's... Kind of like comparing like a uh, oh which diamond I think is slightly shinier. I think I'm just too lost now in Act Two. I think it'll make more. I think I'll enjoy that act more once I ga- gather some of the pieces that they're planting these seeds for. I mean, it's fair. I think Act Three does make Act Two like I know what a lot of these setups are, so mm. I'm looking at them and I'm thinking like, holy shit, this is so cool that they're like setting this up right now. Yeah, but I can understand why like, and if you don't have that context, I can see it being just kind of confusing. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand what a lot of the setups for WV Ascend are, yeah. so I think that's cool as shit that I'm like they're setting a lot of the stuff up, they're hinting to it. <laughs> but WV Ascend on its own where you are in act two it's is like, just confusing as hell yeah it's fuck what what is happening and and that kind of does extend to a lot of the the rest of act two so i can understand that but i think with a lot of the pieces that show up in act three mm-hmm. i think you'll appreciate act two a little bit more even I though concur. obviously it is fucking sick and yeah. like all of homestuck yeah no it's dope i think they just want me lost at this moment in the story yeah they're just trying to be like aren't you so curious about these things which i am i just can't uh enjoy them to the capacity i believe you can yet that's fair all right i i mean that's basically a lot of my closing statements on act two i think that it is fucking sick we're really act one they're just kind of laying the groundwork they're mm-hmm. like here's how this world works let's get you used to the to the vernacular yeah so that's you to understand some of the basic systems in play and act two is where shit starts getting real shit's yeah. hitting the fan it's time we're doing the plot now it's <laughs> happening what happens now rose is like everything's on fire around her and everything is horrible <laughs> yeah and man dave uh, dave is about is to literally murder his, his brother, brother <laughs> with a sword wv's flying around we're introducing more and more characters and we're going to introduce another one at the very beginning of act three starts stuff is starting to escalate and weave together because keep in mind dave and rose and this third person are still on earth yeah <laughs> like the countdown is here like nana sprite has said 
the world will end. World's you fucked. have caused the end of the world, you and everyone else who has played Suburb. So the the clock is ticking. We got to get these other kids in the game. Mm-hmm. Stuff's ramping up, and, and a lot of that's going to come to a head in Act 3 and, and beyond. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm excited for next week. Next yeah. week is going to be a really good one. It's going to be a good one. Oh, uh, just a little uh, a guess for future stuff that I want to say now. That way I can say that I had the guess before it happened. Facts. I think the next uh the next colonel sprite for it will be roses and i think it's going to be jasper i think like that's going to fuse with hers and be the next corn- colonel sprite why do you why do you think that i think it seems to be the most uh the most interesting thing she's connected to i guess it seems like they brought it up a lot to not do anything with it but i could also see that just being like oh yeah she's got a dead cat in a, in a mausoleum nah. <laughs> weird rose thing we wanted to share <laughs> but i just wanted to get my guess on record that way we know that is a very good guess we'll, we'll see if it we'll see if it plays out i don't know we'll see find out next week guys um that's it but, but i'm gonna remember to do it while we record i had to put it in post last time but next episode we're gonna read through all of act three it's I don't remember the exact pages, but it's all of Act 3. It's a little shorter than Act 2, so don't worry. It's not as bad this time. Read through Act 3 for next week. E.T. Yeah. Bitch. Read through Act 3. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll fuck you. I'll smack you upside oh, the head. Oh, I'm, you gonna, I'm gonna read it. I'll read it backwards. Alright, well, that's just too impressive. That's too, yeah, that's, that's too impressive. You okay, gotta okay. cool it a little bit right. so I don't look silly. <laughs> um... Yeah, check out check out the Twitter, check out the Patreon, check out the fucking Discord server. It's all in the description, along with ET's music. Yeah. The fan artists are in the description. Which amazing work! It was beautiful. Incredible! Holy fuck! Good, goodbye. Bye.